Good morning, folks. We are doing a little live style today so you can get a bit more detail about what goes into these morning news you see. So we're starting at spaceweathernews.com. And before we go any further, what is space weather up there at the top? If you haven't clicked that, if you're new here, or if you're not new here and you've just been ignoring that button, you can become a space weather expert. Everything about solar wind, solar flares, sunspots, coronal holes, CMEs, the mega flare. Really, in about an hour, you can become an expert on the sun. You'll be in the top 99.9% .9 experts on the topic in the world. Beneath that, we, have, uh, we always have two different 48-hour rotations of the different solar images here from Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is 193 angstroms on the left, 131 on the right. And as you can see, we don't have any major flares, no big flashes, and we don't have any solid ejecta either. It's as easy as watching for material leaving the sphere. Uh, we do still have this northern coronal hole up there, which is going to be relevant in just a moment. But before we get to that, let's come down to the X-ray flux. Here we have the six hour and the three day solar flares. And as you can see, we have come back down into virtually nothing. It's looking like solar minimum once again. Now we come to the solar wind. We have ACE over on the right. Of course, one of its ground stations is now being used for Discover, which is why you have all these gaps in the data. Uh, but over the last uh, 24 hours or so, what you're seeing here is the spikes in density and then a ramp up in solar wind speed and a slight rise uh, in the solar wind temperature as well. This is actually the impact from this coronal hole stream up north here. Uh, as with all coronal hole streams, they hit with a density shock wave first as these faster particles, obviously moving faster than the slower particles out ahead of it, and so it bunches up the density, the, the electric field plasma of the solar wind, and it hits kind of like snow on a shovel blade, just bunching up there ahead of the faster stream that is pushing that sort of bow shock, the, the shock wave of density that is leading the faster and hotter streams. It was able to uh, drive a nice little bit of energy coupling with the magnetosphere. We did hit level two radiation storms a number of times in the last 24 hours. Uh, one spot of good news, it does appear that that pretty much took away the proton radiation storm, which we had been in for a uh, little more than a week now. Looking at the impact from that coronal hole stream to Earth's magnetic field, certainly looks like it hit like a shock wave. Compression and coupling drove ground magnetic perturbations, also partly induced by the electrojets as well. Perhaps most interesting was the electric field potential, which began looking like a ramp up in the Midwest states, like last time, but not so inconspicuously was lighting up the West Coast throughout the process, and at one point the Carolinas were even lighting up stronger than Chicago, but just for a moment. One interesting note from the lithosphere as we are over here at RSOE EDIS alert map. We do have a volcano going on alert as the volcanic seismic activity beneath it uh, is increasing. Of course, as you can see, we've got a number of airports around there as well uh, as RSOE EDIS alert map likes to show. Moving on next to some of the articles that we have here, Hubble has captured a blistering pitch black planet. Essentially, it is capturing 94% of the light that is falling down onto it from stars, which doesn't actually make it pitch black. We'd still actually be able to detect it fairly well. But that is a fairly, fairly low albedo for such an exoplanet. It is WASP-12b, twice the size of any planet found in our solar system, and black as asphalt. Interesting article that we have here for you guys as well out of GeoResJ. Uh, this one technically won't be published until December of this year, but it is available online now. Uh, the crux of the story is that when they are going through and doing their checking, talking about climate sensitivity, uh, considerably less than estimates from the general circulation models used by the International Panel on Climate Change, which is, of course, uh, the UN's climate change arm. Okay, now we're over at earth.nullschool.net. And if you go ahead and you click Earth down there, I want you to see that I've got 10 HPA, which means I'm up near the top of the stratosphere. I am just looking at the wind. And what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at the first views of the break of the northern polar vortex. As I go ahead and I move through here, this is what it looked like most of the northern summer slash southern winter. Uh, this is as we were getting into it. And of course, this hams back and forth. It likes to stay stronger in whichever hemisphere is experiencing winter at that time. 
Uh, this was actually earlier in the spring, and this was sort of closer to the dead of winter in the northern hemisphere back when it was uh, summertime in the south. And this is how you can track the polar vortex, and it shifts throughout the year. All right, up next we are at windy.com, and we are in the northern part of the West Pacific taking a look at triple systems, one over Vietnam and Laos, one in between Taiwan and Japan. Another one looks like it's heading up and out over across uh, just south of the Aleutian Islands. We've got the pressure overlay on. All of your tools are over on the right. Uh, all of your time stamps are down here on the bottom, and you can switch between the European model and the GFS model uh, right, just right down there. I like to put the pressure on and then watch the rain as it is confined to the pressure cells, and we'll just move forward a little bit here. Uh, we'll go more than just the next 24 hours so we can watch the plan for the weekend of that one typhoon basically run right up over Japan uh, as we basically get into Monday there. Go ahead and use windy.com, the time and the tools over here. Uh, they've actually just added your convective atmospheric potential energy on there as well. So go ahead and check that out and make sure you use that tool. Last thing here is you watch 304 and then 171 angstroms. We will be making our major announcement tomorrow morning of conference speakers. Very glad to do that while that killer sunspot is on the far side and still about a week away from returning. We'll see you all in the morning. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.